Okay, let's evaluate some more limits today. Take number two. Um, okay, so we're going to start by multiplying, or actually by looking at the bottom of the fraction here, and finding the biggest exponent for x, and it's going to be 2x squared. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by 1 over x squared. And that's going to give us the limit still stays the same, of course. Uh, 3x to the 4 times 1 over x squared is just going to be 3x squared. 2x squared times 1 over x squared is just going to be 2. Negative 5 times 1 over x squared, negative 5 over x squared, all over. 5x squared times 1 over x squared is just 5. 6x times 1 over x squared is just 6 over x. And finally, negative 3 times this guy will be negative 3 over x squared. Now we can split up all the limits and apply the limit as x approaches infinity to all of these ones, all of these guys, just because we're not going to get 0 uh, overall at the bottom, on the bottom anymore, or in the bottom. I've used that every preposition that I could have. Um, terrible prepositions. Anyways, um, back to calculus. Limit as x approaches infinity for 3x squared, that's going to be infinity. Lim as x approaches infinity for 2 is just 2. Lim as x approaches infinity for this guy, 5 over x squared, is just 0. Lim as x approaches infinity for 5 is just 5. Lim as x approaches infinity for 6 over x is just going to be 0. And it will be 0 for this guy also. So, well, infinity plus 2 over 5, these guys are irrelevant. The answer is just going to be infinity. Of course, we have three, um, 3 times x squared, right? If we plug in, we start plugging in really large numbers for x, that's going to, the function is just going to skyrocket upwards. So, as x approaches infinity, the limit, or rather, uh, the value of the function is just going to be definitely infinity as well. So hopefully that made good sense. For similar questions, you know where to go.